Hello friends, welcome back to another video here on the channel. My name is Mafalda, for those of you who don't know me, let me just place the camera a little bit lower for you guys to see everything. I think that's better. So my name is Mafalda, that's Reiko over there. We are both Portuguese, so if you don't understand my accent, I'm sorry about that. I'll try to talk as slowly as possible, but sometimes I make mistakes, which is normal because English is not my native tongue. <laughs> yeah, so today's video is a special video because I decided to film something because of spring. So spring has finally started and although I don't like spring <laughs> in summer because I don't like uh, warm weather <laughs> usually, I prefer cold weather and rain and all of that, so <laughs> I know I'm weird, but usually I don't really like <laughs> she's making noises <laughs> i don't really like warm weather but for some reason this year i'm really excited about spring so that being said i decided to do a video just you know celebrating spring <laughs> and with some uh book suggestions for you guys so firstly i would like to say how cute is this <laughs> i don't know if you guys can see it properly i'll try to insert a clip of a close-up here but there she goes but this is a hair i don't know how to call it in english but this is something that i made i crochet it and i think it's really cute and it's very springy and summery and i'm really really happy about it so i feel very pretty on it <laughs> and i decided to wear it today because it's different from what i usually use in my hair usually it's just you know, tie back, <laughs> which is not cool or fun. So I decided to do something different and this, and I'm very happy with it. Uh, so that's not about books and I'm sorry, <laughs> but I hope you enjoy, you know, DIY handmade things because I am really happy with this and I think it looked really, really, it looks really, really cute and it was very easy to do, to make, sorry. And I actually, uh, did one for a friend of mine, I don't know if she wears it or not, but I know that I did one and I think it looks so cute that I think that I'm going to try and make like one with green, oh we you know that sage green, it may look really cute and one with blue, I'm trying to make all the colors, obviously. So, books for spring, I know this is something very difficult to talk about because I usually don't do books for you know seasons or anything like that but i think that sometimes we crave some types of books more in spring summertime and other types of books in winter and, or in autumn for instance i love reading um late summer in the beginning of autumn i love reading dark academia uh, books you know back to school university and all of that i really dig that and in october november i really like to read <laughs> about witches and witchcraft and all of that so I think that all of us kind of like likes to read books that go that goes with the vibes of you know the season that we are which is totally normal and that's why I decided to do this so the first book that I'm going to suggest is this one and I know that it has the most beautiful cover in the world it's one it's one of it is one of the most beautiful covers that I've ever seen and it's Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Ether Fawcett, I think that's how you say, to, you pronounce her name. And even though the book starts in October, because <laughs> that's the starting date of it, it's, I think that it has a lot of springy vibes. I mean, I'm in the beginning, I'm literally in the second chapter right now, but I think it has a lot of springy vibes, which is... Uh, what I crave right now and the thing that I really uh, that I'm really enjoying is that is the writing style so this is like a, an academia kind of scholar journal so the journal so the main character is a girl the book is set in the beginning of the 20th century so in the beginning of the 20th century and the female main character 
uh, is alone in an island um, looking for a type of fairies and she is a scholar she that's what she does for her living and she's very happy with that she has a dog it's na its name is shadow and it's very <laughs> A very peculiar dog and it's very interesting and I'm kind of like starting to read about the encounters and you know, talking about um, fairies and different fairies ar ar around the world and all that which is very very interesting because it makes it it is mixed with more general facts of the world so it's kind of like it kind of looks like it's real but it isn't because you don't have fairies I think unfortunately I haven't met one yet but <laughs> but I think it's very cute and I, I am really enjoying it and then even though the field, her fieldwork starts in October I know that she ends her fieldwork in the beginning of spring so I am craving that you know season changing kind of thing and the evolution of story and I think that's one of I, I haven't heard of it ever I saw it on in a promotion on my usually online bookshop <laughs> And I was like, I love that cover. I need to like see what this is book this book is about. And I loved it. And I am really enjoying it. So I think it's a win-win situation. Another book that I think is really good for spring is this one. As long as the lemon tree grows. The overall opinion is that it's a really good book. It's heavy, it's long, but it's a really good book. And I think that um, if we are talking about March, April, May, June. So four months, more three months and a half, more or less, to read these books. I think that it is a book that I'm really excited to read. Um, I'm really excited to read, even though um, it's a book that it's really, really heavy. It's about a girl, I think, that lives in um, I don't know how to say it in English actually, Syria, um, Middle East, a country in Middle East. I don't know how to say it in English. I'm going to write it down. I don't want to mispronounce it, but in Portuguese we say it's Syria. Uh, and um, she's a pharmacist. A pharmacist she's a student. She's, she is a pharmacy student. And she is desperate to help her sister in law to, to you know, move to another country before her sister in law gives birth. And because, you know, that country is at war as all of us know by now, which is so sad. And um, and yeah, and she's so afraid of everything that's going on that her fear actually became physical. So she is able to project her fear, her fear as a physical embodiment. And it's amazing to see, I think it's very heavy, you know, in terms of um, writing style and also in terms of the themes and the warnings and the themes and the um, the themes that are, that are um, explained and talked about in the book, it's very heavy, but I think it's very interesting to see what her, uh, the importance of fear in her life and how fear helps her, you know, make her decisions, uh, simple decisions. And it's very interesting to, you know, reflect in ourselves and how fear is also something that, even though it's not physical, it controls every aspect of our lives. And I think it's very interesting because we are literally talking about a country that is at war and that her fear is something real. Um, and at the same time, we are seeing that, you know, her fear is, is, is truly real for her. And I'm really, really excited to read it, even though it's very heavy, I think. And I think it's a really good um, spring book. It's like a project. It's a really good project for you to read this spring because I think that it is a book that talks about very heavy um, themes that we all should be concerned about so I leave this suggestion for you guys so on a more light note <laughs> this is the last digital ebook that I leave you uh, with and it's Ben Hur by um, Cassie Alexander now by the title you already know that it's 18 plus so 16 17 14 that are watching this video, please just leave the room. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, I'm just giving this suggestion to 18 plus, so this is the warning. And it is a retelling of Beauty and the Beast, <laughs> and it's a dark romance. And it's short, it's like it has like 300 pages more or less, and it's very fast. 
and it's a very interesting retelling and I'm not going to say anything else because you guys need to read it. Plus the cover is gorgeous. I mean, that rose, it's amazing. So go read it. Now, another books. <laughs> Some books that I really like to um, recommend you guys uh, for this spring, even though I think that it, these are those types of books that you can read all year long. I think they are really good at the beginning of a season. So if you haven't read it yet, please read at the beginning of spring or at the beginning of summer or even at the beginning of autumn. I usually read uh, classics at the beginning of spring or at the beginning of autumn. I think it's it, it makes a perfect balance for the rest of the year. So the first classic, that they are all Jane Austen because I think that Jane Austen is amazing for spring. <laughs> and the first one that I always recommend for anyone that hasn't read Jane Austen, please be aware that her writing style is different. It's not something that we easily read because it's not the point. So please be aware of that. But the first book that I always recommend is this one. <laughs> Pride and Prejudice. So I have the um, the Word Cloud Classics. Uh, I love these covers. I got it, got them like a year ago, and I am so happy and blessed to have them. I feel so blessed to have them. Like you can see, you know, this detail here and you know some um, quotes here. So this is gorgeous, and it says gorgeous in in the in the bookshelf. So Pride and Prejudice, you all know what Pride and Prejudice is about, but I bet that half of you haven't read the book. So <laughs> if you really want to like be something new or if you want another project to read, Pride and Prejudice or any Jane Austen novel is good for that. And I think they are all very good for spring because of the vibes that it gives me. So if you like Bridgerton, if you like all of the Regency area, uh, Regency era vibe, please read Jane Austen because I think you are going to love it. So Pride and Prejudice is my first suggestion. My second suggestion, and actually one of my favorite books ever, is Emma, <laughs> also by Jane Austen. Um, again, it's the World Cloud Classics. I love these classics, these books. Um, and I can't wait to <laughs> try to buy The Hobbit or The Lord of the Ring version because I think they are amazing. And look at this. They are just gorgeous. So Emma is also another of my favorite Jane Austen's novel. I haven't read one yet. That's, that's the project of this year. And lastly, um, Persuasion. <laughs> I love Persuasion as well. It's, it's amazing. I love... Persuasion is very short, guys. You can start with Persuasion if you haven't read any Jane Austen or any classics whatsoever. It's very um, quick and it's fast, like it's faster than the other. So you don't, you can't compare reading a classic novel as reading a ro contemporary romance novel. It's not the same thing. So please don't like feel. It's kind of like you feel frustrated because you think you aren't understanding them, but trust me, you are you need to read it slowly because at the time the books were made and were written for people to really truly reflect on their lives and on their abilities. So this is the goal of the books. Right now I don't think that a book is written to solely um, make you reflect. I think that the book is written to entertain you and it's okay. I'm really happy with that. I love reading books, contemporary romance and fantasy and all of that. At the time the books did reflect on heavier themes and I think also the writing style was completely different which changes a lot and you know we aren't programmed to read that kind of writing at the moment so it's usually very difficult to you know get inside the book or get in the story but as soon as you do this is amazing so if you want to start persuasion is 200 pages, <laughs> I forgot the word, 200 pages, it's easy to read and I love it and I think it's one of the greatest novels ever. I love Jane Austen so I can't, I'm very biased. <laughs> now, lastly, my three last book suggestions, they are actually a series and I enjoyed the series a lot and I think it's 
one of the perfect series for you to read <laughs> this spring. So if you are looking for a series to read, I leave you to the Folk Era series. So you start with this one, The Crow Prince. Look at this cover, the cover is amazing. This one was actually my favorite. I really liked The Crow Prince. I read it in one day and a half or something like that. It was in the, be the beginning of the pandemic, <laughs> in the 2020 COVID lockdown, first COVID lockdown. So yeah, I read it in one day, <laughs> but I really enjoyed it. And I think that it's different. It's something that I haven't read at the time. So I really liked it and I really advise you to, it, to read it. And the second one is The Wicked King. So it's right, it ends, it starts where this one ends. So they just follow the events. And this one is a little bit more political. You have a lot of more um, different perspectives on the characters and you have a lot of, a lot of politics here, which is cool, but it made the book a little bit boring for me, but overall it's good. And lastly, The Queen of um, Nothing. This one is the last one. Um, then they, uh, you do have another one that it's the um, how the King of Elfheim, uh, how the King of Elfheim learned uh, to hate stories. So that's the last book of the series but it's I think it's a standalone I haven't read it honestly because I really enjoyed I mean if I'm going to say which one I enjoyed most the first one the cruel prince was really good the second one was too difficult and that was why I took I read the third one in a year so I took one year off to read to read this one and I read it and I really enjoyed it I love how the series ended I think it's a good end. I already le uh, read The Stolen Air. Now it's a new series that she's starting and I didn't enjoy it. I think it's a spin-off. Really easy and uh, similar to this one. And if you want to read something good and new, The Cruel Prince and the Folk of Air series, the original one is good. So highly recommend this one. It's amazing and it's very springy. So yay! So that's it guys, thanks so much for watching this video, if you are new... So that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you didn't end up like Heiko here that she's sleeping, so I hope I didn't bore you, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. And I really hope you enjoyed it, if you are new here on the channel please uh, subscribe, I'd be very much pleased and uh, give this video a thumbs up, a like, whatever it's called. Follow me on Instagram. I have a bookstagram with all the news and all of that. So you can follow me on Instagram. The link is in the description box down below, as well as all the links for this. So <laughs> you can follow me and see every single thing. And yeah, have a great spring. Read a lot, play a lot, romanticize your life, don't forget to read and be happy. Thank you so much for watching.